The sun beat down, merciless, unforgiving. Dust swirled, danced with the wind and settled on everything. A city's weary breath cobble. He knew this dance, this rhythm of survival. Each day, a fight. Each sunset, a fading hope. His name, Amir, but the city knew him as just another shadow. A street boy, 10 years old, eyes old as the mountains that cradled the city. Empty stomach, heart heavier. He had known laughter once, a lifetime ago, before the bombs, before his world shattered. Now, survival. He clutched his father's worn scarf, a phantom scent of home clinging to the fabric. His only solace, this thread to a past lost. The sun dipped lower, casting long shadows, his own stretching, a dark doppelganger. He had to eat, a gleaming car, out of place in this theater of dust and despair. A beacon, a chance. He ran towards it, hope flickering like a frail candle in the wind. This car, his canvas tonight, his story, painted in pleas and pleading eyes. The car windows tinted, a shield against the world he knew. Amir approached cautiously, his hand outstretched, a silent plea forming on his lips. But something stopped him, a flicker of movement within, a shadow, shifting. He peered closer, heart pounding. Inside, a girl, no older than him, her face pale, framed by dark hair. She was bound, hands tied, fear etched on her young face. His breath caught in his throat. This wasn't right. This wasn't the usual indifference in the eyes of the rich, the hurried dismissal. This was different. This was fear, raw, consuming. He knew that fear. He lived it. But this, this was different. He didn't understand the why of it, but he knew the language of her terror. He saw himself reflected in her wide, frightened eyes. A trapped bird, wings beating against a gilded cage. He had to do something. The girl's eyes met his, a silent plea passing between them. He saw her fear, felt it resonate in his own chest. He knew that look, helplessness. He had seen it in the mirror every day. Her lips moved, forming words he couldn't hear, but her eyes spoke volumes. Help me! The single word echoed in the hollow chambers of his heart. He was just a boy, alone in a city that devoured innocence. What could he do? But those eyes, they held on to him, their desperation a lifeline pulling him in. He couldn't turn away. He wouldn't. He remembered his father's words, whispered in the darkness, Courage, Amir John, is not the absence of fear, but the triumph over it. He looked around. The street was deserted, the sun a dying ember on the horizon. He had to act, and act fast. His mind raced, weaving through possibilities, each more improbable than the last. A rock, hefty, lay by the curb. Amir picked it up, hefted it in his hand. His heart hammered against his ribs. This was madness. This was dangerous. This was his only choice. He took a deep breath, the air thick with dust and despair. He closed his eyes for a moment, summoning the memory of his father's face, his voice. Be brave, my son. He opened his eyes, a newfound resolve hardening his gaze. He swung the rock, aiming for the car window. The shattering glass, a sharp, discordant melody in the fading light. He didn't hesitate, fear momentarily forgotten in the face of a greater purpose. The girl inside, startled by the sudden intrusion, shrank back in her seat. He saw a flicker of hope in her eyes, a spark ignited in the face of his recklessness. He waved her towards him, his heart pounding against his ribs. Adrenaline surged through him as he helped the girl out of the shattered window. Her hand, small and trembling, clutched his. Her touch, a jolt of electricity, reminding him of the fragility of life, the preciousness of freedom. They ran, two shadows disappearing into the labyrinthine alleys of the city. The setting sun, their only guide, painted the dusty streets in hues of orange and purple. He could hear shouts in the distance, the frantic cries of men searching. Fear propelled them forward, a shared burden that weighed heavy on their young shoulders. He dared not look back. The image of the girl's terrified face etched into his mind. He had to get her to safety. He had to. 
They ducked into a narrow alley, the stench of refuse assaulting their nostrils. He pushed her gently behind a stack of broken crates, his own breath coming in ragged gasps. Silence. They waited, two hearts beating in unison, a symphony of fear and hope. He looked at the girl, her face pale in the fading light. Tears streamed down her cheeks, leaving clean trails on her dust-streaked face. He didn't need words, he understood. He had cried those same tears. He wiped her cheeks with his grubby sleeve, a gesture both tender and awkward. He wanted to tell her everything would be all right, but the words wouldn't come. He wasn't sure he believed them himself. Instead, he offered her a small, hesitant smile, a silent promise to protect her, to keep her safe. For now, they were two souls adrift, clinging to each other in a sea of uncertainty. He watched as she took a deep, shuddering breath, her chest heaving with suppressed sobs. He knew that breath, the breath of someone who had stared into the abyss and lived to tell the tale. They were bound by this shared experience, a silent pact forged in the crucible of fear. The night fell, a dark cloak over the city, the air grew colder, biting at their skin. The girl, exhausted, leaned against him, her head heavy on his shoulder. He held her close, a fragile bird seeking warmth in the storm. He knew they couldn't stay hidden forever. They needed help, someone to trust. He thought of his father's words, kindness. Amir Yan can bloom even in the harshest of deserts. But where could he find such kindness in this desolate landscape? Then he remembered. Old Rahim Khan, the baker with a heart as big as his oven. He had always had a kind word, a warm smile for Amir. He would help. He had to. With renewed determination, he gently woke the girl. Come, he whispered. We need to go. She looked at him, her eyes filled with a mix of fear and trust. He took her hand, her small fingers clinging to his, and together they ventured deeper into the labyrinth of the night. Rahim Khan's bakery, a haven of warmth and the aroma of freshly baked bread. The old man, his eyes filled with concern, ushered them in, his weathered face etched with worry. He didn't question, didn't judge. He simply acted. Amir, words tumbling out in a rush, explained everything. The car, the girl, the fear in her eyes. Rahim listened patiently, his gaze never leaving the young girl, her face pale and drawn. When Amir finished, a heavy silence filled the room. Rahim Khan sighed, his shoulders slumping under the weight of the situation. She is safe now, he said, his voice gruff with emotion. I promise you, no one will hurt her. He looked at Amir, his eyes filled with a sadness that mirrored the boy's own. He knew the streets, knew the dangers they held. He had seen too many young lives extinguished before their time. But tonight, he would be a beacon of hope a shield against the encroaching darkness. Hours passed. The girl, wrapped in a blanket, slept fitfully on a makeshift bed in the back room of the bakery. Amir, unable to rest, kept vigil, his mind replaying the events of the evening. Who was this girl? Why was she taken? The answer came with the first light of dawn, a frantic pounding on the door, Rahim Khan, his face ashen, opened the door to reveal a man, his face etched with worry and desperation. My daughter, he cried, his voice hoarse with anguish. Have you seen my daughter? His eyes fell upon the girl, now awake and staring at him with a mixture of relief and apprehension. Baba, she cried, running towards him. The man swept her into his arms, holding her close, his body racked with sobs. Amir watched, his heart filled with a strange mixture of relief and confusion. This man, he was no villain. He was a father, reunited with his child. Then came the revelation. The girl, her name was Soraya. Her father, a wealthy merchant, had been threatened. His daughter, the target, a pawn in a cruel game. He had paid the ransom, but the kidnappers had double-crossed him. Amir listened, his heart heavy. He understood loss, understood fear, understood the desperation that drove people to do unspeakable things. He looked at Soraya, her hand tucked protectively in her father's, her eyes shining with unshed tears. In that moment, 
He knew he had done the right thing. He had listened to his heart, to the echo of his father's voice urging him to be brave. He had saved a life, a small act of defiance in a world often devoid of compassion. As Soraya and her father prepared to leave, she turned to Amir. Thank you, she whispered, her eyes filled with gratitude. You saved me. He nodded, unable to speak, his heart full. Their eyes met, a silent bond forged between them, a testament to the enduring power of human connection, of hope blooming even in the darkest of times. They were both survivors, forever marked by the experience, but also forever changed by the compassion that had bloomed between them on that dusty cobble street.